1978, I graduated high school. That marked the end of 12 years of physical education. My state required physical education for all 12 years of elementary and high school. Physical education was a class I did not like. I was uncoordinated, small, basically fairly weak, unable to catch a ball, pick last for any team. Sports, athletics, and me didn't go well together. And so when I graduated high school, one of the things I celebrated was, ah, no more physical education. I won't have to engage in any athletic activities ever again. Well, fall 1978, my first term as a freshman, and I felt a loss of energy that I had had as a high school student. A lethargy had set over me. I just, I just didn't feel right. Felt all punked out all the time, no energy. And at that time, there was a running boom in the United States. Running was the big thing. And I don't know why, but sometime in that fall, I put on my sneakers and went out to run like I saw other people running. This was the big running boom of the 1970s. This is a big running boom. It was the in thing to do, jogging as it was called back then. Well, I ran two blocks to a playground. I was planning to run more than that, but I ran two city blocks. Hey, boys. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. How are you guys tonight? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're looking good. You're looking good. Could you not get hit by the car, huh? Avoid the car? Oh, okay. Smile. Smile. Dogs can be your friends on a run. These two guys are mine, but they're not careful about the cars. So, yes, yes, I know. You want to take me to my ankle. Don't chew my ankle. Either. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're such a young puppy. Okay. Come on, come on. We're going to run now. We're going to run. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Let's run, let's run, let's run. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. Watch the cars. You always got to watch the car, okay? The cars are important. Show me that stride. Show me that stride. Let's go. Come on, boys. Boy, stop playing around. All right. Later. So, always greet your friends when you're running. Those are two of my best friends right there. I love them. Well... I was shocked, to say the least. I thought I could run farther than two blocks, <laughs> but I was exhausted. And I realized, wow, I really am in bad shape. <laughs> I should do something about this. So, I uh, don't know what might struck me to do so, but I bought a, a pair of some of the earliest running shoes, some Saucony's, and uh, began running. Well, jogging or attempting to go more than two blocks. And uh, I did eventually build up to four blocks. Eight blocks. One day I set a goal of 
Learning from my college campus down to the ocean. Ambitious. But I tucked away some bus money <laughs> for the return trip. And I did uh, make it down to the ocean. But running gave me back my energy. Running gave me back my stamina. Something I was already feeling a loss of at 18. And at first, I can't say that I really liked it for the sake of running. I just felt I was getting myself in better shape. I'd started to do some bodyboarding, and I found I didn't have the wind for that either. And so running and bodyboarding became my two sports. Bodyboarding, surfing. Uh, it became my two sports. Try to get myself into some kind of shape. Well, that was some 41, almost 42 years ago now. I don't see the bodyboard surfing these days. But the running is stuck with me over the years. And I continue to run for Really for pleasure. That's a lot of fun running. Not to mention the friends you meet along the road. Oh, we'll go this way for a while. Always help direct traffic around you. Then speed up to the speed of traffic when you're crossing. That's the way. There we are. I'm not sure, uh, forgive me for being quite this blunt, but I'm not sure walking is as addictive as running, but then I'm not a walker, so I wouldn't know. You'd have to ask someone who's been walking for many years, whether walking carries that same addiction. And certainly it's been studied in runners. Running does energize your body. Running does lift your spirits. Combat, depression, anxiety, for those who deal with those things. It releases dopamine, a feel-good chemical your body produces inside your brain. It releases endocannabinoids. Endocannabinoids are uh, cannabinoid receptor molecules that help tamp down pain. Running helps release them, so it gives you a sense of, well, a sense of just being healthy and well. So, oh, yeah. I'm not on the sidewalk. He's not on the road. It's fair, it's fair. It's okay. So, there's no right way to start running. Although I would avoid starting running in traffic. If you're going to be a beginning runner, go to a track or the causeway or the sidewalk. I grew up in Chicago. And after that 1978 start, I would run as a messenger in downtown Chicago. In heavy traffic. Multi-lane all times of the day. So I'm I'm quite experienced in running in traffic. But it's not a place to start running. Start on a track. Start on a place like the causeway. Although the Yap Loop, Tomorrow Lagoon, great place to begin to run. <laughs> One lap is a mile. But I find running joyful. I find running energizing. I'm 60 years old, but I'm still running, and running keeps everything else working. It keeps my body working, my brain working, so it's highly recommended. I certainly recommend it, but do so with care. I started at 18. I was still essentially quite healthy. If you're older...
or carrying extra weight. I always tell people where to go, they get confused. Uh, they think I'm gonna run in front of them, I'm not. I see them, I know where they're going. If they just keep driving where they're going, I'll be fine. I'm already taking that into account. So, you have to consider your own health before you start running. If you're carrying extra weight, that could be an issue. If you have really bad mechanics, foot mechanics, foot strike, leg throw, you can hurt yourself. My mechanics aren't too bad, and they've gotten better over the years. But I've read up on this sport. I know things like chi running, chi walking, the pose method, many other studies over the years I've read to help me understand running and to have better form. And on rare opportunities, I've had to run with elite experienced runners. I've watched and studied their stride and learned tips and techniques to help reduce my risk of injury. So, again, I, I love running. It's the greatest thing. It's an outdoor sport. It's a social sport. You meet all your friends on an island like this. Uh, I just can't recommend it high enough. But, again, you'll have to work with your body, your health. If you're overweight or obese, stick to the walking. Make sure you've got good shoes. Check your foot type. Get the right shoes for the right foot type. Spend some money. My shoes cost 120 to 150. I know that's expensive. Uh, but so is a medical referral to the Philippines. It's called preventive health care. Yeah, I save money and I don't have any pills. And you know, if you're on a pill here, like high blood pressure, you have to pay an annual $200 fee. Plus a co-payment when you get the pills. That's a lot more than my shoes. And how many pills do I take? None. I take no pills. My family has a history of high blood pressure diabetes, and obesity. All of the men in my family, my uncles, my father, they're gone. My father died at 56. High blood pressure, obesity, heart attack. So, I'm not built different from you. I run, I work out different. And I run three, four, five, six, sometimes seven times a week. But I do try to take a day off somewhere in there. I always try to get a day off at some point. So do run if you can and do so safely. Oh, my shoes. See, she didn't look. That's okay. I'm looking. I still have better reflexes than she does. She's 30, but there's a friend now. That's done. Ah. Oh. Yeah, even my reflexes are better at 60. She doesn't have the knowledge to look and see where I'm coming from. But you have to be aware of that as a runner. Drivers aren't looking for you. They don't see you. So you're looking for those backlights. And you know they're gonna back up. You're ready for that while keeping your eye on the traffic on the right. You gotta pay attention to everything around you. Which is why you should start on a track or causeway. So, I run alone. It's my time to be by myself. I greet people, but I don't look for a running partner. But that's something you might want. Running in this day and age, we're keenly aware of safety and security issues, especially for female runners. Female runners have more security and safety challenges, unfortunately. 
and <laughs> so you must be aware of your environment. Uh, and uh, if you are in an environment where safety and security is going to be an issue, run in pairs, whether you're male or female. Find someone to pair up with and exercise with them. Well, this week we'll look a bit at running. If you do try it, try the walk run approach talked about in the earlier videos or the slow jogging. These are entryways into running. And there are also places you can stay. You can be a slow jogger. You can stick with walk run. Whatever you like and whatever works for you. But I assure you, at 60, I feel great. I enjoy more energy. I enjoy more strength, more endurance. Shoulder, uh, I believe I'm sure able to shoulder a heavier workload than those who don't work out regularly. So, with that said, the theme this week is running. Call it running, call it jogging. But that's the theme. Moving along, enjoying the sights, enjoying even the sunset. Woo! And making sure to watch out. Watch out for those cars. As you go. We'll go up here. Now, mostly it's just like Chicago. I'm running in standstill traffic. That's my fault. I run in the evening during rush hour. But even with all the traffic and the noise, sometimes, sometimes, there are sights of beauty and splendor on a run. Sights that remind you that, well, you live in a wonderful place. So, apologies, it's a little long for one of my videos. I thought I'd give you some background on where I started in running. Today I, I typically run two to three miles. My long runs are five to six. And once in a while I'll throw in a longer eight to nine. Rarely do I ever do more than nine, once a year. And I haven't done a half marathon, which is 13 miles in a long time. So I'm not running very far and I'm not running very fast. But I do do, do get it in regularly. Uh, as close to daily as I can, but always listening to my body and taking off those days where my body is telling me it's a good day to, to rest. But I rarely rest more than three days. My muscles get antsy and I want to be back on the road again. <laughs> 